Because information technology evolves rapidly, database systems become more significant for sectors such as government, finance, medical care, and education. Although many enterprises have highly stable storage devices, these devices cannot ensure data recovery from damage caused by natural disasters. A service interruption to a storage system can cause huge loss. Safeguarding IT infrastructure has become critical for service continuity. Remote replication is an effective data protection mechanism. You can deploy storage systems in different locations and save data copies of the local storage systems to remote storage systems. Such data copies help prevent service interruptions and data loss in case of a single point of failure. The following introduces a typical remote disaster recovery network solution. Here is a deployment site that requires continuous system operation, disaster recovery capability, and in-service data replication. To meet the previous requirements, a production center and a disaster recovery center are deployed at two locations. Asynchronous remote replication is enabled between the two storage systems to achieve remote disaster recovery, which effectively prevents data loss caused by single points of failure. In addition, Asynchronous remote replication does not affect ongoing read and write operations of the host. Next, let's learn about how asynchronous replication is implemented. After an asynchronous remote replication relationship is set up, an initial synchronization is usually performed to copy all data from the primary LUN to the secondary LUN. A data changed log, DCL, is generated on the primary LUN and another on the secondary LUN. The DCLs record the data changes that the primary and secondary LUNs have since the time the last synchronization was started or completed. When data is written to a storage system, a node is added to the corresponding DCL. The node contains information about the data location and the data writing time. When a storage system receives a data write request, the data is written first to the primary LUN. During this time, the secondary LUN is not writable by default. Meanwhile, the DCL records the difference between the primary LUN's data at the current point in time and the time at which the initial synchronization was started. If you manually start a synchronization task or the scheduled synchronization automatically starts, the snapshots of the primary LUN and the secondary LUN are activated. The storage system copies incremental data from the primary LUN to the secondary LUN based on the snapshot and DCL of the primary LUN. During data synchronization, if new data is written to the storage system, a node is added to the DCL of the primary LUN to record data difference without affecting the data synchronization of host's read-write operations. When all incremental data is copied to the secondary LUN, data synchronization is complete and the snapshots are stopped. The storage system waits for the next synchronization. Here comes a question. How does the storage system control the synchronization period? The storage system controls the synchronization period using two parameters, synchronization type and synchronization period. The period can be expressed in minutes and seconds. Here we use minutes as an example. The synchronization type can be manual, timed wait when synchronization begins, or timed wait when synchronization ends. In manual mode, synchronization is started by an administrator. Let's focus on timed wait when synchronization begins and timed wait when synchronization ends. If the initial synchronization starts at 12 o'clock p.m., the synchronization process takes 20 minutes and the synchronization period is 60 minutes. If you select timed wait when synchronization begins, the storage system starts timing when the initial synchronization starts. Completion of the synchronization does not affect the timing. At 1 o'clock p.m., 60 minutes after the time when the initial synchronization starts, the storage system starts the second synchronization. The period from 12 to 1 o'clock p.m. is a synchronization period. If data synchronization is not complete within this period, the storage system waits until the synchronization is complete and then starts the next data synchronization. If you select timed wait when the synchronization ends, the storage system does not start timing when the initial synchronization starts at 12 p.m. The storage system starts timing after 20 minutes when incremental data synchronization is complete. 60 minutes later, at 1.20 p.m., the storage system starts the second synchronization.